Hi, this lecture is about hemihypertrophy, sometimes known in the literature by hemihyperplasia. The objectives of this lecture is we would like to explain the pathology, clinical presentation, and imaging of hemihypertrophy, and also would like to discuss the surveillance recommendation for children with hemihypertrophy to detect abdominal tumors. And uh, last, we're going to speak about the orthopedic management of children with hemihypertrophy. A good source for pediatric orthopedic and sport medicine is this book written by myself and Dr. Naga and Dr. Abdu. It's the second edition of our book. So hemihypertrophy or hemihyperplasia is a congenital overgrowth syndrome in which there is an excessive growth of half of the body. That's why it's called hemi, hemihypertrophy or hemihyperplasia. So it's excessive growth of half of the body. Uh, however, sometimes the um, excessive overgrowth affects only the upper extremity or the lower extremity. It does not affect the whole entire half of the body. Uh, so it is associated with an increased risk of embryonal tumors, uh, uh, mainly Wilms tumor and hepatoplastoma. And this is very important in the management uh, because uh, we need to discuss how can we do uh, the surveillance for these tumors. So this congenital um, overgrowth, the hemihypertrophy or hemihyperplasia, is associated with increased risk of uh, tumors, uh, mainly Wilms tumor uh, or hepatoplastoma. The tumor instance is about 5%. So, uh, hemihypertrophy uh, can be an isolated uh, uh, condition. In this case, it's called isolated hemihypertrophy or isolated hemihyperplasia, or it can be part of a genetic syndrome like uh, Bickwith Widman syndrome. Uh, most cases of Bick, uh, Bickwith Widman syndrome actually have um, uh, genetic abnormalities um, and uh, it will be associated with a low blood sugar. Uh, on famosil, in which there is like an opening uh, of the uh, abdominal structure with herniation of the uh, abdominal structure, uh, enlarged tongue macroglossia, uh, and increased risk, uh, rate of uh, tumor growth. Uh, so um, hemihypertrophy can be isolated or it can be associated with other congenital disease like Bickwith Widman syndrome. Uh, so, for um, to give the diagnosis of isolated hemihypertrophy or isolated hemihyperplasia, uh, you need to rule out first uh, Bickwith Widman syndrome. You need to exclude uh, Proteus syndrome. You need to exclude neurofibromatosis type 1, uh, mosaic trisomy 8, and also vascular malformation um, like uh, Klippel uh, Trononi uh, syndrome. Um, so these are the conditions that you need to exclude in order to give the diagnosis of isolated hemihypertrophy or isolated hemihyperplasia because these conditions are uh, considered also overgrowth syndrome. The clinical presentation will be the extremity um, is longer and uh, wider than the other uh, side. Uh, so um, if you can see here, uh, this uh, uh, extremity here, the right lower extremity, uh, obviously longer. You can see here the patient is leveled. Uh, however, the uh, right side is longer than the left side. You can see the level of the ankle here and the level of the ankle here. Not only uh, the difference in the length, but also the difference in the width. So you can see here the uh, width of the lower extremity here and the width of the liver extremity here. So the, the uh, right side is uh, longer and wider than the left side. And the classic description in the textbook is that you should be able to be, see that difference from the end of the bed, meaning that the, uh, there is um, obvious difference uh, between the right, between the two sides uh, or the two halves of the body. Tumor in cases of isolated hemihypertrophy develop um, with or without genetic abnormalities. So even if you have a case of isolated hemihypertrophy or isolated hemihyperplasia that does not have genetic abnormality, these cases still at a higher risk of developing abdominal tumors. So genetic t uh, test by itself is not enough as a screening method uh, for tumors and patient uh, should go for other methods for detecting tumors. So what is the tumor screening and tumor surveillance for patients with isolated hemihypertrophy? Uh, we have to refer to genetists to know if it's isolated case or part of other syndromes, see if there is genetic uh, abnormalities. And then uh, you have to do screening. As we said, uh, screening is important because sometimes even without any genetic abnormalities, uh, patients still can get uh, a patient with isolated hemihypertrophy can get uh, abdominal tumors. 
Um, so um, uh, the screening is abdominal ultrasound every three months till the age of seven years and serum alpha fetoprotein every three months until the age of four. Um, uh, please note that these numbers som uh, sometimes uh, change between different references. Uh, however, um, most references will definitely um, uh, uh, recommend some sort of uh, abdominal ultrasound and some sort of blood works uh, every three to six months for the first four years of life. Uh, also, it's important uh, that uh, the uh, mother or the caretaker uh, do abdominal uh, examination um, uh, to um, detect if there is any abnormal swelling in the abdomen. So this is the case of a hemihypertrophy. We saw this picture before, so you can see the difference. This leg definitely longer than this leg, and also in the same type wider than this leg. X-rays, you can see the soft tissue uh, shadow here, larger than here, and you can obviously see the difference in the length between this um, uh, 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 right side and the left side, with the right side being longer than the left side. This is an adult child with hemihypertrophy. You can see, obviously, that also the right side is much larger than the left side. Uh, the deformity can be easily seen, as we said before, classically from the end of the bed. You can see that the foot is larger than the right side, larger than the left side. You can see here the difference in the circumference between uh, the large lower leg and the, uh, the right lower leg and the left lower leg. And the same thing here, the right lower leg and the left lower leg, you can see the difference right side is larger than the left side. This is the x-ray and the clinical picture of the child we saw in the previous slide. You, here is standing from the end of the bed. You can see the difference between the right side longer than the left side and also uh, wider. So the right uh, lower uh, leg is uh, larger in width than the left lower leg. Right uh, thigh is wider and larger than the left thigh. X-rays also show the same thing. Right femur longer than the left femur. Right tibia longer than the left. Uh, tibia, the soft tissue uh, um, shadow here is larger than the soft tissue shadow here. All this indicate that this is uh, a case of um, a hemihypertrophy. And then with exam of the child, you can decide if this is an isolated uh, case or uh, it is um, a, a case uh, secondary to other uh, causes uh, like uh, big with uh, Weidman syndrome. So after we discussed the general surveillance and tumor screening, from the orthopedic point of view, the management is one of two options, either epiphysiodesis or lengthening. What does it, epiphysiodesis mean? Epiphysiodesis means the stopping of the growth by shutting down the growth plate. So the patients, if they are skeletally immature, they are still have a growth plate from which they are growing. So what we do is we close or we fuse this growing growth plate so the child is not growing from this side. And it must be doing, done in a growing child. So of course, if the a child is has done the growth and is, is now skeletally mature, you cannot do epiphysiodesis because there is no more growth plate. And this uh, it's done to the longer side so that the shorter side can catch up. So epiphysiodesis, which means stopping the growth of the bone, and it's done on the longer side to allow the shorter side to catch up, but it has to be done to a growing child. Lengthening is lengthening of the short side, and uh, we discussed lengthening before in the lecture uh, that we took for the limb length discrepancy, um, uh, and there is multiple way of lengthening. However, keep in mind that lengthening is a bigger surgery than epiphysiodesis. So orthopedic management, we either stop the growth of the long bone to allow the short bone to catch up, it's called epiphysiodesis, must be done in a growing child, or you do lengthening of the shorter side, and this can be done in a skeletally mature or skeletally immature um, uh, patient. However, it is a bigger surgery than epiphysiodesis. In the next few slides, I'm going to give you an example of epiphysiodesis. Um, so this is a child that has limb length discrepancy because of vascular malformation. If you remember, when we discussed the cases uh, of uh, hemihypertrophy, 
Uh, secondly, to other syndromes, I told you you have always to exclude arteriovenous malformations because uh, this um, arteriovenous malformation will cause increase in the size of the limb affected. So this patient has an arteriovenous malformation on the left side. You can see the difference in the color. So this side is darker than this side. In the same side, at the same time, it's longer and wider. So this patient has arteriovenous malformation here. So the difference in the height and the width is not due to hemihypertrophy. It is due to that vascular malformation. And you can see the difference in the color between the right and the left side. Uh, so this is the x-ray here. Uh, so the patient is on two inches or five centimeter left on the right side that make her basically equal from the up. So the difference in the length is about five centimeter. Uh, so what we did for this patient, we stopped the growth of the distal femur and the proximal tibia. So basically we did epiphysiodesis of the distal femur and the proximal tibia. And we can see here, we uh, used a technique of epiphysiodesis called curettage. So we did uh, uh, drill holes here and then we put a curette and we curetted the growth plate both here and here to stop the growth of the, both the femur and the tibia. So this is 20 months after the epiphysiodesis, and you can see the difference between the right and the left side now is much less. It went from 5 centimeter to 18 millimeter. Uh, uh, so the difference between the two sides is getting now less because we're giving time for the right side to catch up with the left side. To know more about physiodesis and lengthening, you can go to my previous lecture for limb length discrepancy, and I'm going to put the link in the first comment. Thank you. All my videos are for educational purpose only. Please consult your doctor before any decision.